All right, next up are terminal plates. Where do these things leak at, Todd? They leak right through the O-rings inside of these plastic O-rings right here. Once we pull it off, if you pull these out, they don't sell it as a kit anymore. You used to be able to replace each terminal. Now it comes as a complete plate assembly. I'll show you. Obviously, again, recover the refrigerant, pop it down, recover the refrigerant before you take this plate off. And then what I do, is I learned the hard way, like everybody else, is I take rags and I stuff rags. All the way down inside this machine. You can fit about six of them in there. I'm not going to waste a bunch of rags, but you stick about six of them in there to where you cannot drop one of these bolts down inside that motor. It's happened before. That's smart. Look at these numbers. It's U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And I'll go through this later, but U, V, W, XYZ. The new ones will come with one, two, three, four, five, six, or any combination. Any combination that comes. So you need to make sure that you put this terminal on this fucking terminal. How do you mark that? With a marker. So what I normally do is I take, I'll cut either that or I'll write, clean this off. And you can do one of two things. You can use four, six different colors of electrical tape. Red, yellow, white, and wrap each one of these. And then do the same up here. Or you can do the one, one, two, two, three, three lines. Or you can use a label like I got. But I don't think the company's going to want to go buy 100 different labels. This one, one. Okay, so the new plate's going to have numbers on it. So the new plate's going to have numbers on it, and then you take your labeler or marker or tape or however you guys are going to do it, whatever is more comfortable for each person. And just be careful when you put them on because they do fall off because it's full of oil. So I'll label this one. There's my one, and then my new plate's going to be one up here. Hold on a second. Let me do this. Okay, here's a simpler way to do it for your numbering. Take your new plate, which we don't have in front of us, but match it up to your old plate for the numbers, and then write the new numbers on the old plate. So if the new plate, if the bottom row opposite the suction end is one, two, and three, write one, two, and three, or whatever order that is. And then on the top, do the same, four, five, and six. And then when you label your terminals, label them to the new plate's numbers. So in this case, like Todd's done, he's put one down there, and that matches to our Sharpie on number one, which would be the new plate. So here's the lock nut screw. Here's your actual screw and washer. And as you can see here, you have to hold that top of this stud. This is the stud here, and that's not a nut, that's actually K. 
cast. This is an actually guy. cast stud, and like we were saying before, this is a three quarter inch that we've ground down so it'll fit in between. A standard three quarter inch will not fit in there. No, you need a thin one. You need a thin one. And they sell a thin one, or you can just go to Harbor Freight and grind one down because they're, they're a dollar. They're a dollar. And this brings up another good point too, is if you're tightening the lugs from the top, that these things will spin on the bottom. And if they spin, these wires spin around with them. And you may feel like you're tightening something up where you're actually spinning these inside the motor terminal block, inside the compressor, and they'll turn until they break. So here's what happens. If you try to tighten these from the top, the whole, thing, the whole thing spins and you'll just keep spinning that wire around until the wire snaps. So if you have a leaky terminal, tightening it from the top is a poor choice. And why we have these rags in here is if you do this and one of these drops down in there, you will never get it out. Remember they're brass. They are brass. All right, here we are with the uh, terminal block removed and the terminal plate. And as you can see, these wires, had they not been marked, they can go any which direction. Would be a challenge. These can swap. I mean, you can do anything you want. And when you're taking them off one at a time, you're not. You can't just set them in a spot. So make sure you guys mark these wires because there's no way to. There's no way to find out once they're <laughs> off. <laughs> Yeah, you got one shot. You got one shot to, and it's a twenty-five thousand dollar compressor. So when this is going back on, one thing to keep in mind is if you have the terminal block out by itself, that plate, you can leave the gasket off if you just have the plate. So if you have the plate on, all these wires are connected still you can still slide this gasket off as long as these are off and I recommend you guys doing that because when you're putting the new one on you have this leaning up against this edge and you will cut the new gasket when you put it on so leave the gasket off till you're all done with this once you're done then simply slide the new gasket on and then we're good to go all right so to check these terminal plates what you're going to do is you're going to open up the main top and if you see oil dripping down anywhere around here you're going to find out that one of these is dripping it's normally it's one of the four outers so what i normally do then is I put the system in a vacuum, valve it off, pressurize just the compressor to about 70 pounds. I clean the oil up around the terminal, I soap bubble it, and I find out which terminal is leaking. Once I find out what terminal is leaking, you can actually take off the wire of the terminal that's leaking, put a socket over the top, Take a pair of channel locks and you can watch that stud to make sure that stud isn't spinning crazy but most of the time you can turn it about a half a turn until you don't see any soap bubbles anymore and that will stop your leak. So it's a customer's option if he wants to replace the whole terminal plate. Actually what we'll do is I'll take this off and I'll show you what that o-ring looks like so you guys can understand how thick that o-ring is and why you normally don't have to replace the whole plate. Let's just do that. Just so you guys understand how thick this o-ring is in here, you can take this off, you can push this stud right out of this slot, and that's your o-ring. This is what makes your seal inside this plate so you can stick this in here 
push that down, put the insulator on, put the washer, and the nut back on it. And you can do this just like we were talking about. Instead of replacing the whole plate, I just wanted to show you guys how thick that O-ring is. So it doesn't take much to just put a socket over that and tighten it a half a turn or three quarters of a turn until the soap bubble stop because you're not going to, that O-ring so thick, it's there's really never going to wear out. There's a lot of room for movement. There's a lot of room for movement. Yep. The, the key is that that stud doesn't turn as you're tightening the nut. Exactly. And it can turn a little bit. I don't want you guys making a half of a turn or three quarters of a turn. If it does a quarter turn, I mean, you're probably going to be okay. But if it doesn't stop without a, within a half a turn, then you need to pull the plate off. 